Okay, that's our grasshopper model for drawing land use distributions and for getting the feedback about the traffic that the distribution is causing. So what you need to understand is the part of the grasshopper definition that you see here on the right hand side. So these elements, these groups, um, that's what you need to know. You don't need to understand the whole rest of the definition for this lesson. Um, in the lesson before you learned how to use the network analysis. That's part of this definition, but I will not look, <coughs> look into it anymore. I will concentrate on really drawing land uses and working with the results from the network analysis. So what you see here on the left hand side, that's our circular city. Um, you should know it already from the other exercises. Um, here um, we have the plots inside our network and in each plot you see these circles. They will be used to show you how many units we place inside a plot. So that's a kind of a chart um, giving you the amount of units, um, of population units or workplace units in a plot. And the lines, now they are all blue because we don't have any land uses distributed, means we don't have any traffic, nobody is going from A to B. And blue means that's the less, the least number of traffic, in this case zero traffic. And um, here you see these two bars and um, you see below population and workplaces. They show you how many units you have already distributed. And in the end of this lesson, you have to distribute 1000 of each um, land uses. Means you have to fill up these two bars. But I will show you later how this works. So on the right side in the grasshopper definition, you see at the top a load safe bubble. Here you have two components that allows you to save your land use pattern in the case that you want to use it for later and recall it and load it again, then you can use this save and load function here. But I will show you later how this works. If you have drawn something and you want to delete everything, there is the reset button. This starts from scratch as you see it here. Then in the green box we have the population control. Here you can draw or delete population units and the same for workplaces. Um, at the bottom here you have the visualization components that you can turn and turn off, turn on and turn off to see different aspects of the analysis. We will change later to um, the, the view of um, uh, streets that are used a lot and the corresponding um, parcels. So these streets will be later called the active streets um, that we are interested where we generate them by our land use pattern. And finally this box here, this contains the statistics. So let me scroll in here. Here the total travel distance. That's the number that you shall minimize. The total network length it's constant because we don't change anything in the network but later for your design exercise or for your urban planning project this number is of course relevant because this these are costs that you generate by adding streets somebody have to build them somebody have to maintain them this costs money and this number usually need to minimize but the less streets you have the longer the distances will become. So these criteria usually contradict to each others, but you will realize this in the later process of the course when you really try to apply this model. For now, I just wanted to mention it. And these aspects um, I will show you also later, the areas and the length of the active streets. And these are constant aspects. I will look into them later again. 
But now let's start with the interesting um, part, how you can draw land uses, land use units. Let's start with the population. So that's probably the most important part of the definition, the population control and the workplace control. So what you see here, that's the uh, uh, Boolean toggle, true or false, means if it's true, you can draw population units. And the same for workplaces, if it's true, you can draw workplace units. But for now, we only want to draw population units. Um, <clears throat> and we have a scale, so this means how many units we want to add per move if you imagine we use a brush with, by which we draw land uses or population units into our map here that's the strength of your brush so now if it's true and everything else is false you can just hover your mouse above the grasshopper the, the rhino viewport and the corresponding parcel into which you want to draw land uses and press the left mouse button and you see these circles, the charts they are filling up means you have filled this plot with so and so many um, population units. So there are there is a certain capacity of a plot. It's not really relevant how many these are because it's more for bigger plots and less for smaller plots. I think that's logic. Therefore you also have smaller circles where you can add less population, but it always gives you the ratio how many units you have placed into this um, plot and how many you still can place into it. Okay, but let's, oh, sorry, let's reset it. And now draw just um, population units, oops, reset again, just draw them into one plot. By the way, you see here this um, selection rectangle. This doesn't mean anything. That's just something we cannot deactivate for this mouse interaction with our geometry. So just ignore it. You just draw by pressing the left mouse button and moving your mouse around. And the faster you move the mouse, the more units you place into the parcel. So now um, let's turn off the population and turn on the workplace control and draw workplaces at a different place in the map. And now you immediately see we generate traffic. And if you remember the network analysis, we generate traffic from A to B. So these um, workplaces, they are connected from this plot to the neighboring streets. And these lines indicate to which streets the plot is connected to. And this means we calculate the shortest distances from all of these lines to the lines or respectively to the parcel to which this or to the streets to which this parcel is connected to. So here are so to say the entrances to the parcel to the population or the population is leaving this parcel from here and traveling along this path or this one to the workplace units. At the moment when we draw somewhere else workplaces then you will see that this traffic that we generate um, is highlighting another path. So this path is also used a lot from this population units to travel from here to there because this plot is connected to this street by this link. And I've mentioned this in the introduction, there is no clear assignment um, to which um, workplaces these population units are traveling. It's distributed um, by the ratio. So these workplace um, parcels, they are approximately equally sized. So half of the people from here will travel to this place and the other half will travel to the place at the bottom. So that's the logic how we, dist how we assign um, origins and destinations of trips. Okay, but now let's 
look back how we can draw units. You can also activate both to true and then you can fill um, the plots with both of the land uses. And um, so how many you will distribute, you distribute depends on these numbers. So we have 38 um, for the scaling of the population and 30 for the scaling of the land you of the workplaces if we move both to 30 no, then we can distribute equally um, or equal number of workplaces and residential units so it's not always working correctly because depending on the speed of the mouse sometimes it's um, distributing first the population units and second the workplaces if you move too fast but in general it should work that you equally distribute these land uses if you use the equal weighting. If you have um, distributed something in a way that you don't like you can also remove them so let's try this um, for the workplaces if we set it true and we set the remove work to true as well and deactivate the population then we remove workplaces only so now we can remove the workplaces from this plot just by moving around your mouse while you press the left mouse button then everything is removed or from here <clears throat> if you activate population growth at the same time then what will happen is that you remove workplaces and add population units instead so here you see you remove the workplaces and you add population and the other way around works as well. If you set this to true, then you will remove workplaces. And if, uh, excuse me, you will remove population units and you set this to false, nothing will happen for the workplaces. Then we can remove workplaces from here. Okay, so what you may have seen at the moment when you draw land uses, you will get here the average travel distance updated. So now we have 30, uh, 330 units of travel distance. So it doesn't matter what these units are, kilometers, meters, independent. We only want to minimize this value. And you have to, um, so the, the idea of the model is that you have some challenge and that you have to distribute um, these 1000 units. So it means you have to fill up population and workplaces, these bars to 100% by drawing here your units in the model. And while you draw them, um, you see the bars at the right side, they are growing. So you distribute more and more units. If you want to do it faster, just increase this scaling value then you draw more units per mouse move then you can do it faster and so let me just make it very fast and generate some kind of pattern here so just that you get an idea what you shall do so your population bar have to fill up to 100 percent and then you can draw the workplaces as well and by going around here and you see always when you draw something some new um, land uses then the network centrality computation is updating the colors of the streets means you change the centrality of certain areas because if you travel more from here to somewhere else then um, the high values of these streets they are just changing respectively the lower ones so here it doesn't mean that blue is zero it's just the lowest value and red is the highest value of trips through these streets so now um, we've generated 100 percent for each land use that's what the aim of the model and we generated or we caused a total travel distance of 1400 37 units. Um, we can compare this to our 
null model, so the, the baseline model that you have to beat, 1473, if we reset it and I've preloaded the equally distributed land uses. If I load it, then you see we have um, an equal number of land uses in every, or an equal ratio of land uses in every plot. And this causes 1490 units of travel distance. So it's a little bit worse than my land use pattern that I generated in before. And that's exactly what you have to do. You have to be as good as possible. We will also compare your numbers with the numbers from your colleagues. So the idea is to have a small competition who comes up with the land use pattern that generates the lowest number of total travel distance. So be smart, play around. And it's also a good exercise for you to, to test land use distributions. So patterns of land uses. Um, for example, um, there is the idea of having a, a mixed use city where you have used uh, mixed population and workplaces. Um, but there is also the, the classical modernistic approach to separate these land uses, to have residential units in the center or on the left hand side and the workplaces on the right hand side. And you can just test these patterns. Um, what's the resulting travel distance? And of course, you generate less traffic if you put things closer together in general. So if you have, if you start from the center, that's probably a smart idea. Um, otherwise, um, you move things farther away from each other, which will probably um, result in a worse travel distance number. But that's something I've not tested, that's just an assumption, that's what you can test.